Okay, I think we're good to go. How do you like to play Commander? Do you try and interact with your graveyard so you can sacrifice your creatures and bring them back? Do you like to create an army and buff them up with enchantments and swing all out? Or are you like me and always try and lean towards a spell slinger route with instants and sorceries? Or maybe you like to play as most of us started off playing Commander, where your deck leans into a certain tribe or type of creature. Playing a certain creature type can certainly make building your first Commander deck easy. But creature-based strategies are always really powerful for your 50th commander deck. Now that you've decided to build around a creature type, which creature type should you choose? Well, if you watched my last video, you could go with Merfolk if you like 1-1 counters and card draw. Or you could go with another option, arguably one of the strongest creature types in all of Magic the Gathering. Today, we are going to talk about goblins. Hello and welcome to the channel if you're new here, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. I am your host and your friendly blue mage, Azarain. You can call me Azo. And before we get started, please just remember to like and subscribe, comment, do all those things if you want. I try and reply to everyone, and I really do appreciate it. Also, if you were trying to join my Discord, I think my Discord link was broken, so that should be fixed now and I should probably fix the lighting. If you were trying to join my Discord earlier and could not, I think the link was broken so I'm uh, pretty sure I went ahead and fixed that so please make sure to join the Discord if you want to talk to me, if you want to talk to others, if you want to find out how you can be on any live streams, I would appreciate that. And yeah, let's just get right into the video then. So when I first started playing Commander, I remember someone at my local game store, uh, they had a Cranko Goblin deck. And man, as an early commander player, I, I looked at that deck and like it was the strongest deck ever built. And the way that it had so many synergies, it had tutors, ways to deal damage, creating so many tokens that could just be sacrificed, used as blockers. And as a goblin player, you don't really care if your little one ones die and you'll probably be making a hundred more throughout the course of a game. But would you believe me if I told you that there are other legendary goblins that we could use as our commander? I know it's crazy, right? But let's take some time to dive into some recommendation for other goblin commanders besides Cranko. So we're going to go ahead and look at the other legends. Goblins tend to lend themselves primarily into red, but they also do dip into black as their secondary color. There are some green goblin legendaries, but those are pretty much outliers. So I'll be mentioning some black cards throughout this video for our purposes. I think focusing on mono red is going to be the route that we take with our goblin deck. Uh, but we're going to start off with some legendary goblins and uh, just take it from there. So first off, the goblin that I want to talk about, and these are going to be legendary goblins that really care about uh, what goblins want to do. So if you watched my last video, the merfolk video, there are some merfolk that care about drawing cards or uh, the, you know, the number of creatures that you have, but they don't really necessarily deal with merfolk in general. So I'm just going to go ahead and mention the goblin cards that specifically care about goblins. So we're going to start off with the first one that is going to be our only black and red one here on this list is going to be Wart Bogart Anti. Anti, however you want to pronounce it. Wart is a 4 mana 2 in Rakdos for a 3-3 three, three with Fear. So I believe Fear says that you can't be blocked unless it's by a black creature or an artifact creature. Uh, someone may have to fact check me on that. But at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target goblin card from your graveyard to your hand. And it really doesn't do anything else more than that, so Wart is just Goblin Recursion. It cares about goblins, it specifically says return a goblin from your graveyard to your hand. But moving on, the next ones that I'm going to mention are all going to be Mono uh, Red. So the first one, uh, it's... <laughs> Believe it or not, we have a couple Krankos on this list. So first is going to be Cranko Tin Street Kingpin. So for three mana, you get a 1-2. Whenever Cranko Tin Street Kingpin attacks, put a 1-1 counter on it. Then create a number of 1-1 red goblins equal to Cranko's power. So what's cool about Cranko is that you can suit him up with some artifacts. You can give him haste like Mono Red wants to do. Uh, and if, But if not, he also just gives himself a 1-1 counter, and then you get to make goblins. So he functions kind of like Cranko Mob Boss, but he's a little... Um, uh, he's he's very different, but he's doing the same thing, which is making the goblin tokens, but he's not going to be as scary. So you might be able to have a little bit more fun uh, within your game without just going off and just becoming the threat as soon as your commander resolves. The next Cranko we're going to talk about is Cranko Baron of Tin Street, which is also three mana. This Cranko does come with haste as a 3-3 and has a tap ability that says tap, sacrifice, an artifact, put a 1-1 counter on each goblin you control, which is actually 
insane. Uh, then whenever an artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay one red. And if you do, create a 1-1 red goblin creature token and it gains haste. So this uh, Kranko kind of just wants to be like an artifact based deck, which is another avenue that red likes to go in. But he has haste. He allows you to, he's a sacrifice outlet for an artifact. He puts a 1-1 counter on your whole team. And then he also gives you another ability. So when an artifact is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you can pay red and make goblins. So he's doing what Cranko does, which is make goblins. He's a sacrifice outlet and he cares about artifacts. So this Cranko, Baron of Tin Street, just wants to do a lot. Uh, the next is going to be, <laughs> I might uh, butcher this name, but it's a uh, Pashalik Mons, I believe. So another three mana. You'll find that most goblins are pretty cheap. So Pashalik Mons is three mana for a 2 2. Whenever Pashalik Mons or another goblin you control dies, Pashalik Mons deals one damage to any target. Then he also has a pay ability, which is four three and a red sacrifice a goblin create two one one red goblin creature tokens so he's you know this one's obviously not as good as cranko in my opinion but he's definitely deserves a spot here so you can sacrifice a goblin if there's some graveyard effect or sacrificing effect and you just make two one ones uh, and then whenever a goblin dies he deals one damage to any target so he can be uh, player removal or he can be uh, board control for some value creatures Next is going to be probably the most expensive goblin that you will see or play is going to be Muxus, the Goblin Grandee. So for six mana, four red red, you get a four four Muxus Goblin Grandee enters the battlefield. Reveal the top six cards of your library. Put all goblin creature cards with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library. Whenever Muxus attacks, it gets plus one plus one for each other goblin you control. Muxus goes crazy and he has an enter the battlefield trigger so you can do things uh, that flicker creatures. I really don't know how many effects you're going to get in mono red besides um, Conjurer's Closet. Obviously that's an artifact but Muxus for six mana can just be massive. You give him haste. You're going to have a bunch of other small goblins. He allows you to play goblins for free from the top of your uh, library from the top six cards. So Muxus just goes crazy for six mana. And last on this list is going to be the classic Krenko Mob Boss. So that's, you probably know uh, what this commander does at some point or another. You probably played against it or built this commander. So Krenko Mob Boss is four mana, two red red for a three three. Uh, all he says is tap, create X one one red goblins where X is the number of goblins you control. So this Krenko wants to have haste. He wants to come down. He wants to tap immediately. He wants untappers. So he's going to tap, 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 tap. And you're just going to make a billion goblins and use things that allow you to sacrifice creatures or you're going to go to combat. You're going to have um, things that just give your whole team of uh, boosts, power boosts, and you're just wanting to just smash face. So Krenko is very classic and very strong commander and a very good choice to lead your goblin deck. But I personally, I obviously chose all these because I really like them. But I think my two that would be in the front running for my opinion, uh, goblin commander, I would either want Krenko, Baron of Tin Street or Muxus, the goblin grandee. Uh, yeah, those are just my opinions. And so after we've gone through my top ranked goblins to lead our goblin deck, there's still quite a few goblin legendaries that we need to talk about that can supplement our deck. And they may not be the best in terms of goblin specific synergy, but they do have a place in the deck. So quickly, uh, we do have quite a few to run through, so I'm not going to spend too much time just talking about um, all the different things that they can do, but I'm just going to read the card and why they're good. So first off is Goro Goro, Disciple of Ryusei. So he's two mana for a 2-2, but then the special thing about Goro Goro here is that you can pay one red, and it says creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. So if we're, you know, Kranko's our commander or whatnot, and we're gonna, we can pay one red and give our whole team haste, um, that's an ability that goes on the stack. Creatures you control, so I believe that other creatures don't have to like, they can enter after this ability is resolved and it just says creatures we control this turn gain haste. So uh, that's a uh, really, really nice effect here from Goro Goro to just give haste on a, on a goblin. Uh, the next is going to be Grenzo Havoc Razor. So for red red, we get a 2-2 two -two that says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you choose one. You go to creature they control, which is kind of mid, but then you can exile the top card of that player's library until in turn you may cast that card and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. So this is just going to give us a huge power boost. Uh, we can play things that are outside of our color range. We steal things from our opponents and we also get, uh, we deny them what's on the top of their library and then we get to play that for free as it says, well, not for free, but we get to play it for you know man of any color so we can use our red to pay for things that are outside of our color range next is going to be ib half heart goblin tech 
Tactician. So for four mana, you get three and a red for a three, two. Whenever another goblin you control becomes blocked, sacrifice it. If you do, it deals four damage to each creature blocking it. Sacrifice two mountains, create two one, one red goblins. So that's, you know, you're probably not going to be wanting to sacrifice your lands in mono red, but it just makes our opponents blocking our one ones horrible for them because you know oh it's a 1-1 one, one, I'll block it Ib then just deals 4 damage to that creature so it's going to let us keep more of our goblins on the battlefield more often than not next is probably a goblin that you were thinking of when you clicked on this video which would be Kiki Jiki the mirror breaker uh, very famous goblin uh, broken combo piece most of the time so he's 2 red 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 for a 2-2 two, two with haste you tap Cranko, create a token that's a copy of a target non-legendary creature, except it gains haste, and you sacrifice it. So basically, like Kiki Jiki, you want to tap him, make a thing, untap, tap, 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 tap. tap. He's he falls in the same line as Cranko Mob Boss. So I don't really need to say anything more about this card. It's a very famous piece of magic history. Cranko is or um, Kiki Jiki. So you know what Kiki Jiki does. And if you really want to know more about Kiki Jiki, you can go ahead and Google him. And there's probably many websites and articles uh, listing on how to break Kiki Jiki, how to make him go infinite. Next is Slow Bad, the Iron Goblin. So for three mana, you get a three, three that says tap, sacrifice an artifact, add an amount of red mana equal to the artifacts mana value, then spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts. So this, um, may not have a great place in the deck but mono red can really lend itself to some artifact synergies and strategies so i feel like i wanted to throw a slow bat in because i'm also a, a shill for artifact decks uh next is going to be squee dubious monarch uh the squee cards are all nice because you can cast them from like your graveyard or from exile so i'm actually going to throw up the other uh squeeze on the side of me right now so that's going to be squee goblin nabob and squee the immortal so the first one the dubious monarch is a 2-2 with haste and whenever he attacks he creates a 1-1 red goblin that's tapped and attacking and you may cast squee from your graveyard by paying four mana three and a red and exiling four other cards from your graveyard rather than paying its mana cost. So this is kind of like an escape ability to give Mono Red some graveyard stuff. Uh, also Squee the Goblin Nabob says at the beginning of your upkeep you may return Squee from your graveyard to your hand. So if we have anything that wants us to like sacrifice a creature, Squee is just gonna come back to our hand every turn. Uh, Squee the Immortal says you may cast Squee from your graveyard or from exile. So Squee the Immortal is just going to be a goblin that is always around. You use him as a blocker, use him as sacrifice fodder. Squee is always going to be, he's basically, if you can find Squee in your deck, he is always going to be able to, he, he's just another card in your hand, basically. Uh, next is probably one of the strongest goblins that we'll have in our deck is Zada Hedron Grinder. So for three and a red, we get a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Zada, copy that spell for each other creature you control that spell could target uh, each copy targets a different one of those creatures so zada is just you know you play a card that says give target creature plus one plus oh and first strike draw a card we're going to give our whole team plus one plus oh and first strike and we're going to draw 30 cards so zada is again if built right zada can be one of the strongest goblins within our deck and the last one i want to talk about is zozu the punisher I personally like Zozu, especially in these goblin type decks, because Zozu says whenever a land enters the battlefield, Zozu deals two damage to that land's controller, so it does hurt us, but Zozu is here, so when the, the green mages cast their cultivates and their extra ramp spells, or, you know, just they play a bunch of extra lands, Zozu's gonna say, okay, you can play your extra lands, but, you know, you're gonna take two for each one of those lands. Us being in mono red, we're probably only playing one land a turn. We're going to rely on artifact ramp. So Zozu is going to make sure to punish the players who are trying to get ahead with lands. And then he doesn't really hurt us as much because we're probably only playing one land per turn. And finally, I'll just talk about some non mono red goblins that you can run. But again, these goblins don't provide really any goblin synergy, but they just happen to be goblins. So that's going to be things like Grumgully the Generous, Vile Smasher the Fierce, and Wart the Raid Mother. So Grumgully just gives each other non-human. They enter with a 1-1 counter on it. Uh, Vile Smasher does have partner, but in this case, he's not really our main commander. So whenever you cast your first spell each turn, uh, choose an opponent at random, and Vile Smasher is going to deal damage equal to that spell's converted mana to that player. And Warp the Raid Mother uh, is a really cool like spell slinger kind of goblin, uh, but she is four hybrid hybrid gruel. So she's red, green, red, green. And 3-3, three, three, when she enters, she's going to make two 1-1 one, one red, green goblin warriors. And then each uh, green and red instant or sorcery has uh, conspire. So you can tap two 
uh, creatures that share a color with it, and then you copy that spell as you cast it. So Wart's kind of cool, but very different. But if you're playing red-green, Wart might be uh, an option for you to consider. Because I personally, I think Wart's really cool, but again, I am a, a spell slinger player. I like to focus on instincts and sorceries, and Wart just lets you do that twice. So, But now, we need to move to a section that any good creature type deck focuses on the lords of the deck the thing that are going to boost the power and toughness of our other creatures that share a type with them when they come down so things that will give a buff to everything and they share a type with it uh, lords are specifically great with goblins because they make our 1-1 goblin tokens into formidable monsters that we can use to attack or block so the goblin lords are going to be things like uh, and again when as i start this section i don't really want to spend too much time because a uh, lord is pretty self-explanatory i don't really feel like i need to read the mana cost and the power and toughness like that's going to be on the screen so just make sure to go and use your eyeballs and look so goblin war chief three mana two two goblin war chief is really nice because goblin war chief makes goblins less to cast and goblins have haste so it's got two abilities stapled onto it skirk prospector allows us to sacrifice goblins to add red mana so it's like a ramp uh, goblin chieftain has haste other goblins you control have one one in haste which is really nice goblin trash master uh, obviously, 1-1, one, one, Sacrifice Goblin, Destroy Target Artifact, so this is a level of control. The Hobgoblin Bandit Lord uh, has a pay 1 red and tap him. Hobgoblin Bandit Lord deals damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under your control this turn to any target, so that's player or creature. You can use that to control the battlefield or to just knock someone out if they're low enough. Goblin King. Uh, gives he's a goblin all these are goblin lords so I, I don't know why I keep reading it as they give one one because that's what this section is specifically uh, so goblin king uh, gives all your goblins mountain walk in addition the crater walling bogart I believe that's how you say that crater walling uh, each goblin can't be blocked except by two or more creatures so he gives all goblins menace and then each elemental uh, I guess that doesn't really matter the Rundvelt Horde Master uh, obviously is a lord. When Rundvelt Horde Master or another goblin you control dies, exile the top card of your library. If it's a goblin creature card, you may cast that until the end of your next turn. So he's uh, pseudo card draw, like impulse card draw. And the Battle Cry Goblin, uh, we have to pay to activate this lord. So it's two mana goblins you control get plus one plus oh and gain haste, which again, mass haste. Uh, mass power boost but then it also has pack tactics whenever battle cry goblin attacks if you attack with creatures with total power six or greater this combat create a one one red goblin that's tapped and attacking and the last two that are going to round out our list are mad auntie or auntie i guess however you pronounce it this is mono black uh is a goblin lord but then it says tap regenerate another target goblin and the last one is Quest for the Goblin Lord. Whenever a goblin enters the battlefield, you may put a quest counter on this card. And as long as Quest for the Goblin Lord has five or more counters on it, creatures you control get plus two, plus O. Oh. Uh, so something that red will always struggle with is drawing extra cards. Usually red will rely on impulse draws, but here are some ways that some goblin creatures can help us get extra cards into our hand or allow us to play extra cards and act as like a pseudo card draw. So that's going to be something like Conspicuous Snoop. So for two mana, you get a 2-2. Two, two, play with the top card of your library revealed. Extends our deck to the to basically like an extra card in our hand. You may cast Goblin Smells from the top of your library. And as long as the top card of your library is a Goblin card, Conspicuous Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. So Conspicuous Snoop does something further. It allows us to play from the top of our library, but then it also will act as the top card of our library. So it's going to... And it just instantly becomes that, so we can get some really powerful effects on Conspicuous Snoop. Uh, then we have pro arguably one of the strongest goblins in the deck is going to be Goblin Ringleader. So four mana, three and a red. We get a 2-2 two -two with haste. Whenever Goblin Ringleader enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library and put all goblin cards revealed this way into your hand and the rest at the bottom. So again, this is just massive amounts of card draw, and it's when it enters, and then it also gets haste, which is really nice. Uh, the Moria Marauder, so another 2-2. Two -two. It's a 1-1 one -one with double strike. Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn, which is really nice. And another mono black one is Gorbag of Minas Morgul. So two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. 
Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice it, and when you do, choose one. Draw a card or create a treasure token. So if you can sacrifice your little 1-1 one -one tokens and you either get card draw, and that's at no downside too, which is kind of cool. So usually black is going to say draw a card, lose a life. This just says draw a card, or you just make a treasure. And again, usually it's like make a tapped treasure. This just makes you a full-on treasure, which is really nice. And the last one is going to be the Dark Dweller Oracle. So two mana for a 2-2, two, two. pay one, sacrifice a creature, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. So this card is just going to, again, allow you to sacrifice your little 1-1 one, one tokens, and it's going to turn into an impulse draw, which is really, really good for what we're trying to do. Uh, this section, I really didn't know where to place in the video, but this is just like the odds and ends of our goblin creatures that will give us some solid effects. So that's going to be things like Warren Instigator, 2 mana for a 1-1. One, one. It has double strike. When Warren Instigator deals damage to an opponent, you may put a goblin creature from your hand onto the battlefield. Goblin Lackey, 1 mana for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever Goblin Lackey successfully deals damage to a player, you may choose a goblin card in your hand and put that into play. So they do the same thing. Uh, Vexing Shusher is a uh, hybrid hybrid, so Gruel Gruel for a... 2-2, two, two, it can't be countered, and then you can pay a hybrid gruel, and target spell can't be countered, so this will protect us from those pesky blue mages. Uh, a newer card is the Crime Novelist, so for 3 mana we get a 1-3 that says whenever we sacrifice an artifact, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Crime Novelist, and add a red mana, so when we, it basically turns our treasures to adding us 2 mana, and then if we are sacrificing any other artifacts like a mono red might want to do, we just get to give Crime Novelist a power boost and add mana to our mana pool. And lastly is the Legion Loyalist. So one mana, one, one with haste and battalion. Whenever a Legion Loyalist and at least two other creatures attack, creatures you control gain first strike and trample until end of turn, and they can't be blocked by creature tokens. So the Legion Loyalist is an insane one mana card with haste. So this is just going to make sure we get in for some serious damage. And something that goblins really excel in is dealing extra damage. Whether that's to a creature or player, we can start using our goblin synergies to do something that isn't just putting more goblins onto the battlefield. So that's going to be cards like Gem Palm Incinerator. So it's got cycling one and a red for a... Its mana cost is two and a red with cycling one and a red for a 2-1. When you cycle Gem Palm Incinerator, you may have it deal X damage to any target where X is the number of goblins on the battlefield. So it doesn't just take into account your own the goblin sharpshooter so for two and a red a one one goblin sharpshooter doesn't untap during your untap step but whenever a creature dies untap goblin sharpshooter and you can tap him and deal one damage to target creature or player so if someone just created 10 one ones goblin sharpshooter can just take them all out right away uh, brash taunter so for four and a red for five total you get a one one with indestructible whenever brash taunter is dealt damage it deals that much damage to target opponent and then you can pay three two and a red and tap the brash taunter and brash taunter fights another target creature so this won't die because it has indestructible and you could fight like a galta or something like that and just deal that much damage to that creature's controller uh, goblin War Strike, one mana for sorcery. Goblin War Strike deals damage equal to the number of goblins you control to a player. So again, just very effective. One mana, just snipe someone. Uh, then we have Bogart Shenanigans. So two and a red for a tribal enchantment goblin. Whenever another goblin you control is put onto, whenever a goblin you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may have Bogart Shenanigans deal one damage to target player. So your goblins are probably going to be dying due to blocking or attacking or just you sacrificing them. And Bogart Shenanigans is just going to make sure to pop off and just kind of ping your opponents for one damage. Goblins won't really struggle with ramp as most of them are only a few mana, but we do need to talk about ways to accelerate mana so that way we can dump our hand if we need to. Uh, things like Dockside Extortionist or a Goblin, I'm not going to spend time reading that because you probably know what it does. The Brightstone Ritual, one mana, instant, add a red for each Goblin in play. The Frog Tosser Banneret, Haste, and other goblins and rogues cost one less to cast. Treasure Nabber, one of my favorites, honestly, is two mana, one, two and a red for a 3-2. Whenever an opponent taps an artifact for mana, gain control of that artifact until the end of your next turn. So you can just steal everyone's mana rocks and use them for your own. Fable of the Mirror Breaker and Reflection of Kikijiki are also nice. So the Fable gives you a 2-2 goblin that creates a treasure on attack. 
It allows you to discard up to two cards and draw that many cards. And then it turns into a Kiki Jiki that you have to pay one mana for. But still, it gives you, basically, this card will give you two goblins and allow you to ditch some bad stuff in your hand and get two more cards in your hand. And there's really only one card that I could find. It doesn't necessarily interact with our graveyard, but it does prevent our goblins from going to the graveyard. And that is Goblin... Oh, God. I am probably going to butcher this name. Goblin Churich... Churid... I don't even know. Churid... Churigurd... Churid... Surgeon, Goblin Surgeon, that's what we're going to call him. So he's one red for an O2 with a zero ability, sacrifice a goblin to regenerate target creatures. So we can make a 1-1 and then sacrifice that 1-1 to regenerate a goblin that we don't want to lose. Now something that goblins do probably better than any other creature type is creating little goblin tokens. So here are the best goblin token makers out there. So that's things like Siege Gang Commander, which when it enters, you make three 1-1 red goblin creature tokens and it has a pay ability, one and a red to sacrifice a goblin and deal two damage to any target. The Sling Gang Lieutenant, when Sling Gang enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one red goblins and sacrifice a goblin, target player loses a life and you gain a life. Legion War Boss is three mana that has Mentor, so whenever this creature attacks, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target attacking creature with lesser power, so that will be easy to do with our 1-1s. One, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token. That, con that creature token gains haste and attacks this combat if able. The Bogart Mob is the champion goblin here, so when it enters you have to remove a goblin that you control from the game until champion or until Bogart Mob leaves. Whenever a goblin you control deals combat damage to a player, you may put a 1-1 black goblin rogue into play. The Goblin Rabble Master, other goblins of other goblin creatures you control attack each turn of able, which might not be what you want to be doing, but um, it, it gives you a pretty powerful effect. So at the beginning of combat, you create a 1-1 red goblin with haste, and whenever goblin rabble master attacks, it gets a plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn for each other attacking goblin. So this can get really big really quickly. Uh, next are going to be some non-creature stuff. So goblin offensive is X1 red red. Put X1-1 one, one goblins onto the battlefield. Uh, empty the Warrens, it has Storm, create two 1-1 one, one red goblins, so for four mana, so it's going to copy itself for each other spell you've cast this turn, and could just make you a ton of goblins. And Goblin Assault, two and a red, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one red goblin with haste, and then other attacking goblin creatures attack each turn if able. So that's just something to keep in mind that might uh, hinder your blocking ability, but goblin decks really pretty much just want to go right to combat. No creature type would be complete without the list of tutors that we can use to find exactly what we need throughout the course of the game. So I'm just going to throw all of them up on the side as this is the tutor section. I don't really need to like read every card uh, because these allow us to go get goblins. So that's going to be Goblin Matron, Bogart Harbinger, and Goblin Recruiter. So those are all going to let us go dig in our library and whether we put those cards in our hands or on the top of our library, we're going to make sure to go and get the strongest goblin for the best situation that we need. Now, after we've discussed some of the best goblin cards throughout all of Magic, we also need to talk about the best support cards we can run within our goblin deck that will directly benefit our strategy. And no, I'm not going to recommend something like Jessica's Will or Vandal Blast because you're a grown-up, you're smart, and you're capable, and I know that you can decide to run those cards on your own. I want to focus on the things that are going to give us something to do with the amount of tokens that we make since we're in red and we're going to combat will be a key part of our strategy. So we are going to start with something that you were probably thinking at the beginning of this video. How do we deal damage when creatures enter? So that's going to be some mass damage stuff with Perforos, God of the Forge, which is a 6-5 indestructible god for 4 mana, and as long as our devotion is less than 5, he is not a creature. But whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, he deals 2 damage to each opponent, and he's got a pay ability, 3 and a red. Creatures you control get 1-0 until end of turn. And then that's also going to be things like Impact Tremor, so it does what Perforos does for 2 mana, but it deals 1 damage to each opponent when a creature enters. And I also wanted to throw in Goblin Bombardment here. It doesn't really have anything to do with goblins, but it says sacrifice a creature. Goblin Bombardment deals one damage to any target. I've seen this used to remove value creatures. To, it can even remove big creatures if we have enough creatures of our own. And it can take out players when it becomes late in the game. Because we can go to combat, deal a bunch of damage, and then sacrifice our whole board and knock someone out. And I just wanted to mention that I did not include Warstorm Surge in this area, even though it has like its impact tremors and perforos on steroids, but with goblins, our spells are really cheap. 
Warstorm Surge is six mana and doesn't really benefit us because our creatures are pretty small. So Impact Tremors will do the work that Warstorm Surge does for four less mana. A card I have really started to uh, grow to like is Battle Him. So for two mana, one on a red at instant speed, add a red to our mana pool for each creature you control. Uh, so this, we're going to be making a ton of creatures. This is a two mana investment, and we should just get a really big boost of red mana at instant speed. So we can use it to activate abilities or use it on our turn to, to cast a bunch of stuff. And now we have targeted damage. So massive raid. Massive raid deals damage to target creature or player equal to the number of creatures you control. Outnumber, one red and instant. Outnumber deals damage to target creature equal to the number of creatures you control. Mob Justice, one and a red. Mob Justice deals one damage to target player for each creature you control. <laughs> Last Ditch Effort, one mana. Sacrifice X creatures. Last Ditch Effort deals X damage to target creature or player at instant speed. Uh, and we also have Burn at the Stake. Uh, it's a sorcery, so two red, red, red. As an additional cost to cast Burn at the Stake, tap any number of untapped creatures you control. Burn at the Stake deals damage to target creature or player equal to three times the number of creatures tapped this way. So this is a massive damage spell. And the last uh, spell that I'm going to talk about in this section is called Goblin Charbelcher. So for four mana, it's an artifact, and I'm going to make this bigger so that way I can actually read it. So for three mana and to tap the Goblin Charbelcher, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a land card. Goblin Charbelcher deals damage equal to the number of non-land cards revealed this way to target creature or player. If the revealed land card is a mountain, Goblin Charbelcher deals double that damage instead. Put the revealed cards at the bottom of your library. So this isn't going to allow us to draw any extra cards, but it is going to deal double damage. So if we reveal 5 cards, it deals 10 damage. And this is just an artifact, so it might be a little harder to get rid of. It's not a creature or anything, so I felt like Goblin Charbelcher was really good uh, in our mono red deck. Next is the attacking synergy. Uh, you see a pair of goblins, so for 3 mana at instant speed, choose 1. Uh, creatures you control get plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn, or you can create 2 one, one goblins. Shared animosity, whenever a creature you control attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 0 for each other attacking creature that shares a type with it. This is uh, a very popular uh, red card for tribal or typal decks. Raid Bombardment, so for again 3 mana, it's an enchantment that says whenever a creature you control with power 2 or less attacks, Raid Bombardment deals 1 damage to the player or planeswalker that it's attacking. So Raid Bombardment's pretty cool for a goblin deck. Uh, last one is a tutor. Uh, it says Descendant's Fury, so for 3 and a red, again I need to make this bigger because uh, these have a lot of text on them. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice one of them. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with the sacrificed creature. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest at the bottom of your library. So for four mana, Descendant's Fury is just going to allow us to get rid of a 1-1 token and make a big... It's going to give us just a free card. Uh, it might not be too huge because goblins are usually pretty small, but trading in a token for a named goblin is going to be so much better. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Maybe it changed your mind or encouraged you on why you should play goblins in EDH. Goblins can be really fun as they want to get right to combat, they have tons of haste and lord effects, and they also seemingly really want to be sacrificed to provide you with a lot of different effects. Goblins are certainly a popular creature type within magic, but let me know what you think of goblin decks and which legendary goblin you would choose to lead your goblin army in the comments below. Also, comment on which creature type you want me to take a closer look at next. Remember to like and sub and check out my discord if you want to join me in building a magic community. And as always, I am your host and your friendly blue mage, Azarain. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.